Fate comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're listening to The Moment of Power with Azano Eddie Thompson. Daily audio devotions to energize your day presented by the Advent Hero Ministries. Our moment of power topic today is count down to eternity count down to eternity part one and jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily i say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down matthew chapter 24 verse 2 jesus was predicting here the destruction of jerusalem but he was doing this in response to something that happened and the disciples were showing him the buildings of the temple they were perhaps proud of the of the buildings of the temple if you read verse 1 it says and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him and show him the buildings of a temple. And that's why he predicted and said, look, not one stone here will be left upon the other. The disciples were so shocked, so shocked to the very marrow that they asked Jesus. They said, Lord, in verse 3, they actually asked him two questions in one, if you please. Verse 3, let us read it. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's a question they ask him. What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? In their minds, they were equating the destruction of that temple to the end of the world. And so the kind of two questions that they asked him, and Jesus decided to give answers, two answers. And one was relating to the destruction of Jerusalem, and the other was about the signs of the times. You know, signs that show that his coming will be near and it will be the end of the world. Let me read something from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings pages 120 and 121 quote the ruin of jerusalem was a symbol of the final ruin that shall overwhelm the world the prophecies that received a partial fulfillment in the overthrow of jerusalem have a more direct application to the last days we are now standing on the threshold of great and solemn events a crisis is before us such as the world has never witnessed end of quote here the author is saying that look what happened to the city of jerusalem what happened that led to the destruction of jerusalem what happened in the destruction of jerusalem is a kind of a microcosm it's going to happen again but this time on a worldwide scale And so we need to pause and take a look at some of the things that Jesus said about the destruction of Jerusalem. Actually, that day, Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem as he was entering the city. Let's pick it from verse 41 of Luke chapter 19. We take it to verse 44 and it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes, for the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children with thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. End of quote. So, the reason why Jerusalem was destroyed 
was because of the sins of the people, because they had rejected the Son of God. That was the height of it. Yes, down through the centuries, they re rejected the prophets and rejected the warnings of the prophets. And now they have rejected the Son of God. Even time for them to repent on that, they did not. They persecuted his followers. And there was an occasion where he said, look, how I have longed to gather thee as the hen will gather her cheeks, you know, and, and protect you. But they rejected the son of god and they did not know the time of their visitation i believe that god is visiting you today even in this moment of power he's telling you things that you should take serious you should take your relationship with jesus serious you should begin to know that sin and god do not go together if you want to have god in your life then you need to let go of the sin you need to seek for his grace to overcome whatever cords of sin the devil is binding you with. Now, let us see the instructions that Jesus gave them after he had talked about the destruction of Jerusalem. He gave them some instructions. And those who did not pay heed to these instructions, they perished in the destruction of Jerusalem. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. We're going to be talking about instructions, signs that Jesus had given that we need to pay heed to and we need to begin to study and to know and to put our hearts together to know that today is the day of salvation and that Jesus wants us to be ready for his coming. Matthew chapter 24, we read from verse 15, quote, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give sulk in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And of course, that's verse 20. What is Jesus telling them here? He predicted the destruction of Jerusalem, and he made reference to the prophet Daniel. That is chapter 9 of Daniel, where Daniel spoke of the abomination of desolation. What does it mean by the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place? He was talking about the Roman soldiers with their standards standing around Jerusalem. Let's read a parallel passage to the one we have read before. You will see that um, that's what he meant. Luke chapter 21. Let's read from verse 20 to 24. Quote, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judah flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein to. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. End of quote. What do we see here? In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus called it the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. In Luke chapter 21, verse 20, he said, When you see Jerusalem's compassed with armies, know that its desolation thereof is nigh. And then he told them what to do. He said, Look, when you see Jerusalem compassed with army, what you need to do is to get off if you were in the fields already just move from there don't come back whatever you are doing it will be time to move out of the country it will be time to move out of the city of jerusalem 
it will be time to move. That's what Jesus told them regarding the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, let us see exactly what happened. As they went on, as they meditated on the words of Jesus for about 40 years, you know, from the time Jesus made these predictions to the time they happened in AD 70, it was about 40 years. In the interval of those 40 years, there were people who were calling the words of Jesus to mind, studying the words of Jesus, getting ready. So when they saw the armies surround the city, they did exactly what Jesus asked them to do. And no Christian perished in the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, God gave the Jews signs upon signs upon signs that for them to call his word to mind, but they ignored all of these signs. L let me read two paragraphs from the book, The Great Controversy. And of course, the author here, Ellen White, was quoting Jewish historians, quoting historians like Milman, the history of the Jews, quoting historians like Josephus, first century Jewish historian. And let me read, quote, Signs and wonders appeared, foreboding disaster and doom. In the midst of the night, an unnatural light shone over the temple and the altar. Upon the clouds at sunset, we have pictured chariots of men of war gathering for battle. The priests ministering by night in the sanctuary were terrified by mysterious sounds. The earth trembled and the multitude of voices were heard crying, let us depart hence. The great eastern gate, which was so heavy that it could hardly be shot by a score of men and which was secured by immense bars of iron fastened deep in the pavement of solid stone opened at midnight without visible agency. For seven years, a man continued to go up and down the streets of Jerusalem declaring the woes that we are to come upon the city. By day and by night, he chanted the wild dirge. A voice from the east, a voice from the west, a voice from the four winds, a voice against Jerusalem and against the temple, a voice against the bridegrooms and against the bride, a voice against the whole people. This strange being was imprisoned and scourged, but no complaint escaped his lips. To insult and abuse, he answered only, Woe, woe to Jerusalem, woe, woe to the inhabitants thereof. His warning cry ceased not until he was slain in the siege he had foretold. End of quote. The Great Controversy, pages 29 and 30. You know, before God would leave a people to destruction, he would give them signs upon signs upon signs. He would give them time to repent. He, he would tell them everything. And God's love would keep holding on until people would no longer be hearing the voice of the Spirit in his word. And that was what happened to Jerusalem. And today again, we were told that if you read the destruction of Jerusalem, you can read it in chapter one of the Great Controversy. I recommend that book. You will see that no one needed to have died. Of course, no Christian died. When they saw Jerusalem surrounded with armies, the Christians ran away. But the Jews, they did not read the situation right because they did not take Christ's predicted words to heart. What do we need to learn from that? You know, more than one million Jews perished in the destruction of Jerusalem because mysteriously, this army that surrounded Jerusalem, they retreated. And, and as they were retreating, the people 
of Jerusalem, they thought that Jehovah was fighting for them. And so they ran after the Roman army and even killed some of them. And they were jubilating. They came back to the city and jubilated that God had fought for them. When in fact, God was not fighting for them. God was only opening the way. That was the sign. The sign was the army surrounding the city. God was only telling them that it was time to run away from the city as, as Jesus had predicted many years before. And the Christians ran away. And after every Christian had left the city, the army came back and besieged the city. And the slaughter, you know, was terrible. Bombed down the temple killed the people inside the temple and it was a terrible time more than one million people died needlessly because they did not heed the word of god i want us to pray together today that we will not be careless about the word of god the, the prophecies of the end what happened in jerusalem we have been told will happen again this time on a worldwide scale how much heed are you paying to the prophecies of Matthew chapter 24, of Luke chapter 21, of the other portions of scripture that talk about the signs of the end. And how are you taking these words to heart? How are you preparing to meet your God? Our Father in heaven, we come to you, we worship you. There is none holy as you, there is none beside you. Lord, the signs have been there calling our attention to live godly lives, to know that Jesus will come soon, that he is delaying because he does not uh, want anyone to perish, not willing that any should perish. There is no slackness on his part. It is because of his mercy upon us that there has been a delay. Oh, Father, we come to you, we worship you. Lord, many of us, do not know the grace that you you have given upon us your it seems that the devil is trying to make your grace to be in vain in our lives but today lord by these signs i pray that you wake us up and help us as we look at what happened in the destruction of jerusalem in AD 70 and as we look at the prophecies that portend that your coming is nigh Oh, Father, we pray that you will help us and bless us. And I want to pray in this moment of power to the listener, to your child. I pray that a sense of purpose, a sense of wakefulness, I pray that you will give us the grace to begin to prayerfully study the word and to let the spirit change our lives as we look at what jesus has done for us on calvary as we look at his the promise of his coming as we look at the, the one who as we listen to him who said behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be as we meditate on these words oh father may we be transformed may the word transform us may we not be like the wicked servant who says in his heart my lord delay it is coming and he started oppressing his fellows in the church oh father be with us and bless us i pray that blessing we follow your children and your name be glorified and we will not ignore the signs like the jews did and they were destroyed we will not engage in wrongly claiming that god is on our side when we are ignoring his warning thank you for your goodness and mercies in jesus mighty name we pray amen